Hello again and welcome to Match Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthway. Hey guys, I'm Carla Garrick. And boy, is it warm out. Oh, it's, it's uh, nice. I love it. Don't get me wrong, but I do have to, like, I did have to break down today and say to Dan, because Dan works from home almost all the time, right? Did you say the AC I word? did. I said, so well, did we. Well, I said, okay, I'm not going to make him work in hot. Right. You know, like, I can have a glass of water and sit down and relax. So, just this late this morning, I said, we're turning it on. But this doesn't mean it stays on till September. Right. Like when it, the temperature drops next week, it goes back off. So it's supposed to drop tomorrow. So we had the exact same conversation in our be, house. It's still going to be warm, I think, through the weekend. So I, I mean, we're 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 out on Friday, but but Louis was like, should I put on the AC? And I was like, he runs hotter, right. you know. So I was like, if you think so. And then I was like, put it on because I'm having a hot flash. Well, I, mean, I, I notice it when I go down in the basement for something and then come up the stairs and I'm like this. I'd like. Hit me. I, like, I what did. is that? And I'm I hit. thinking, here's poor Dan in a leather chair working away making the monies. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, short term. But, I mean, you do, you do have to – part of it is acclimation. But, right. I mean, like, I'm doing things out in the yard. Um, I'm spray painting patio furniture and cleaning off my pet. You know, like, doing right. the things. And I have to go, like, okay, out there for – okay, now i got to go sit in the yep. house. I mean, it's like 88 water, or right? something, so, yeah. Whatever. So I don't know what you got. I have so many well, stories. I'm so old, annoyed. And it's funny I, with everything. So did um, you see? And I kind of was. Did you see the executive council approved a million dollars for the Stevens Community Center? I, I did see I that. They very clearly told us this was going to be raised in private privately donations. funded. Oh, yes. So weird. for that folks way. who don't remember, last year or the year before, I think it was last year. I don't I, know. I don't it's know. all starting Recently. to blend together and. The uh, Stebbins family, in honor of their uh, patriarch who died, wanted to start a boys and girls club on the west side, which maybe is not the world's worst idea. Right. What's a bad idea, however, is to unilaterally decide you're going to do it and not speak to one of the neighbors that is going to be affected by right. it. So they wanted to rip out our community garden, yep. which, you know, lots of people worked really hard to implement yep. their raised beds. And it's, it was just a bad location for this Type, type of, of thing. Building. So now they moved it by leasing the land to the area where I actually recommended they put it where I think the services right, a, are needed. A, a housing development. Yeah, there's low income housing there, probably more likely to have clientele. Well, and also, like, like that. One of the women who testified about the Boys and Girls Club said, you know, it can really change someone's life. Like, I feel like right. there's value right. there in terms of. Uh, 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 helping a demographic, but one of the big things they said at the time when we were having the discussions, um, and and I'm grateful we were asking, they moved right, it. We're, right, we're, we're asking where is this money coming from? Where is the money? And we kept getting told time it and time again it was privately funded. funded. And uh, and now it's, and it's not. And to be honest, what irks me is, um, I mean, I'm sure part of this. I'm hoping part of this, anyways. It is. Um, and we're, uh, I'm hoping that the so money came grant from, money, I from think. like ARPA funds or something. I think it's federal grant money. I feel like I looked that but it's up. Still, I just thought it was funny. I printed it but out. But also, it's... federal grant money just for folks back home. It's like, still I'm our money. It. It's like flushing everywhere, right? But it's still our money, and it's the reason why yep. groceries are more expensive. Yep. So we're talking uh, before I go. I, I do have something. So um. Mark Warden, of all people, made a post today about um, his uh, his homeowner's insurance went up like 38%. And I had read an article recently on NPR about how homeowner's insurance across the country is like skyrocketing. And actually, New Hampshire is probably one of the least impacted by this inflated, in, this raise in um, homeowner's insurance. Part of it is inflation. Well, I think it's inflation, but it's also... Um, in places like California, where they force you, so in California, I have to remember how it exactly went because it blew my mind when I heard it on NPR. You are forced as an insurer to insure. Like, you're not allowed to say, say actually, no. you live in a earthquake zone on the side of a mountain where there are often landslides when the wildfires don't right, get you. Right. So, hey, if you want to build there, it's going to cost you a lot of money because we can tell from right. the data, <laughs> the science, yeah. that this is not a good place for so you that, to put that your would house. factor into, obviously. And then there's been natural, like, natural weather disaster types of things. There have been a lot of hurricanes and there have been a lot of tornadoes. And, but, I mean, part of it is inflationary. Just literally, the cost of 
labor and materials to do, you know, if you have a, a whatever, a freak thund a thunderstorm and your roof gets ripped off or damaged. Well, I mean, you know, I, I mean, it's not the same price that it was five years ago to get that roof repaired. Well, it's also a problem because we have, a, it seems like there's like a labor shortage. But I told you when I got back from Mexico, from Anarcapulco, so in Acapulco, Mexico, which was hit by a Category 5 mm. hurricane last year, uh, very unusual, direct yeah. hit on the town. And... It's devastated it, yes. and nothing is being fixed. Because it's all it, these old yeah. resorts on the beach. And I was like, I wonder maybe yeah. they don't have insurance. Well, either they don't have insurance or like you said, there's just no labor pool or, to do the, I mean, you still, you, you see it when we go to Florida, you see like, okay, there was a hurricane that hit the Fort Myers area, but that was like two years. That was not like a few months ago. And when we were down there, you still see buildings mm. that you're like, that's odd. I don't think that one had a roof. <laughs> like, right. I don't think that restaurant's supposed to be open air. Um, <laughs> so there's that. But then they talk about car insurance. So Dan and I were talking about this way, and I said, so then car insurance rates have also gone up. And that, they say, also there is that inflationary aspect that, you know, it costs more just generally to repair a vehicle. But because vehicles are so much more complex than they used to be, the cost of repairing everything is that much more. So I'm like... You know, people sometimes don't, I mean, the inflationary aspect alone, no. People have to, people are starting, I think, really to feel the pinch. I mean, just watching, I don't even remember what we were talking about. Something was on some YouTube, something or other. And they were talking about, um, it was probably when we were talking last week about how Trump's still doing so much better. It, like, every poll is showing that I he's I see New Hampshire's in play up, yeah. now because old Biden because literally showed up yesterday. can't can't ignore the inflation. I mean, it gets to a point where, you know, it's pain, and then there's people uh, who are just like, this yeah, is but nuts. to be fair, and I know no one wants oh, to hear Trump this. Is just as much of a no, but, it, but but the inflation is Trump's fault because the inflation is lag. It's a it's lagging a lag. indicator of monetary policy. So if we print eight trillion dollars, two years yeah. later you're going to get but they, inflation. But they're continuing and doubling down on. Well, I mean, expected. doing the whole hey, we're just going to do away with people's student debt. Hey, you know what? I have some credit card debt. Maybe not. Right. Maybe I do. But hey. Can hey, I, neighbors I'd back like home, would you guys like to off. pay my... Yeah, you know what? I would like I would like some bennies. Why not? Um, the other thing that I printed out, and it's funny, so I ran into... Do you know Kurt Stranson? Mm -mm. So I'm not sure. He's either a real estate agent or an insurance agent. I can't ever remember. Anyways, I ran into him at lunch, and he, he was talking to me about some things, which is ironic, kind of tied into what I had printed out to go to the show. So I was like, oh, that's funny. Um... There was a, cup, a homeowner in Sunapee who for two years was fighting with the town of Sunapee because they would rent out their travel trailer in their backyard. Okay. And Sunapee said, you can't do that. And it comes down to like, well, wait a minute, why? And I got to thinking, I printed this out because I, I realized- Like I said, Airbnb in their yeah, back, okay. Like, yep. Short term rent. Okay. So. And he would, he mentioned short-term rentals because I guess Joe Lavasser made a post about like should we limit, should we not allow Airbnbs? Stop meddling. Well, that's what I, I was really glad to see that most people said you can't, the government can't keep getting the mill. Now I realize I have a um, a bipolar attitude about property rights, and I'm the first one to say I feel like I am not consistent in my views, and that's I, and it's just one of those things. I do I think if you are a homeowner. I think you and Louie should be able to do what you want in the property, at the property that you live at, right? Now, when I, and I've said this for years, now, if I own a, a rental property that I do not live at, that's not really a residence, that's a business. Those might have different rules. Just like, you know, fire pits in your backyard. A homeowner should be able to have a fire pit in their backyard without having to get permission from the city. Now, and they do the same thing with chickens. Like, you can get chickens, but a rental property can't get chickens because chances are there's nobody living there that's really maintained. You know, like, it's just, it's a different, we all were renters once. It's different. So I realize that I've got this, like, divide. And I also don't, I'm not a fan of saying that you can build as many apartments as you want in your single family home. However, if I want to rent a room in my home on Airbnb, 
The government should get the hell out of my way and mind their own damn business. First of all, if you use Airbnb, they automatically charge the room and meals tax, which goes to the state, which goes to the city. So they're not skirting something. If anything, those people that are doing things like renting a trailer in their backyard are providing options for well, people. Well, not only that, but you know, I, I was looking at my flight, to, uh, this is related. So the taxes on anything now is about 30 <laughs> to 40% on airplane yeah. tickets, on Airbnbs, on like, it's just, it's absurd. Every time some politician goes, hey, should we uh, no. just imagine to yourself before you say yes or no, do I want this to be 30% more expensive because that's all you're doing is every time the government gets involved you make things more expensive and so they're involved in way too many yep. things and i mean literally and i was the, i mean the good thing is most of the people who responded said on this post said you know the government isn't the solution they can't get anything right let's not screw this up I too mean, and the housing um, shortage is their fault too so it's like they make a problem and then they try and fix a problem you know, and then they make it the, a worse and problem part of the argument and i can appreciate this argument but I, I don't think it applies here in particular is they say well if a property again let's go back to whether it's a home or a business to me that's the difference if i don't live there then it's not a ho my home it is my business if people but now when you're renting your room out in this scenario now you've made your home your business now how does now it I consistent have a home -based business right <laughs> so but what I'm they say is the problem in other places let's say in Florida or you know any place that's a destination um, what happens is these investors come and they buy the rental properties you know the condos on the beach in Florida and then they can charge so much more because they can afford to buy them and they can charge more. You can make way more money Airbnb every, you know, for a month than you would in rent. So it makes the rental prices go up. That's all fine. I, I, I can appreciate that math. However, I might surprise people, but Manchester, New Hampshire is hardly a destination. People are not saying, I think I want to go on vacation and I think I want to go to <laughs> Manchester, New Hampshire. Yeah, now, yeah. maybe, maybe Lincoln or, you know, like more Portsmouth. Right. Manchester isn't it. So, like, if somebody really wants to Airbnb a room in their house, it's not, it's not, like, it's not going to change the rental market, the actual rental prices. The only thing that's going to change the rental prices is more units and less demand. Yeah, so. and and you know, and and <sighs> again, if we actually just let the markets work, then we wouldn't have to have an answer to every well, question because what would happen is the market would experiment, this person would rent out, maybe there's a whole street where people are renting out, people realize, oh, this doesn't really work because it's creating parking problems right. or whatever, and then you mitigate in the moment, i.e. iteratively through the flow of time. But what we're doing is we're trying to predict the future and write down all the things we think are gonna go wrong before anyone's allowed to do anything. And then we wonder why everyone is cuckoo this is, this is typical government. Let's, I'm refreshing myself with this article. So the, the town's argument was um, the trailer couldn't be used for rentals because they have a provision in town allowing travel trailers to be used for temporary sleeping quarters, not more than 90 days out of a year. So basically that, that rule is to prevent people from living in a camper on, their, on a property. But okay, but then these- But it's still wait, on a property these, and so the question is who owns that property? These same people though, while they weren't able to make the $13,000 in two years, which is probably helping them pay their mortgage and their taxes, while they couldn't do that, they have rented out a 400 square efficiency apartment in their home for 220. So they can rent out a room in their home, but they can't rent a trailer in their backyard. But this is why government gets so, so screwed up because we start putting in rules and we start writing exceptions to the rules and more rules and extra All rules. All right, let's talk ah! about some more rules. I had my uh, right to know oh uh, board meeting this past Saturday yes. and uh, so we now have another town where the police have knocked on a right to know activist's door and told them that they should really just please stop uh, being nosy. 
and I'm like, wow, much like I'm sure you heard this this morning, but uh, the news du jour out on, you know, the X sphere is uh, Trump. Trump's raid on Margot Lago, Mar Margo Lago, Mar Lago, whatever, uh, the place down in Florida. So the Department of Justice of America said when they issued the warrant to go see if President Trump had classified documents, they issued a uh, can kill order. So basically may use lethal force order. And now that they got caught, the Department of Justice of America said they can go to a president's house and shoot him to find out, to if, he find out if he has some paperwork. Now, if you're like, so what? Let's reverse it. Imagine the Department of Justice went to Hillary Clinton's house with a can kill order in order to go get, didn't oh, she, I don't know, I don't know hard her, drive her, her, her computer. Server? Yeah. Um, you know, where she kept all her secret documents. <laughs> well, while where there running. were all sorts of classified stuff that was not p protected in any way. So, from so, the internet, mind you. So, so it is a horrifying idea. Now, of course, the DOJ is like, well, that's just standard procedure, mm. right? But when I heard that, I was reminded of this right to know situation here in little old New Hampshire, because I can barely think of something that to me is more fascist mm. than police officers because you know what when a police officer shows up at your door they kind of also have lethal force yeah. authorization right because they're there they're allowed to shoot you in certain circumstances a lot of which I've personally find a little questionable but you know feel free to go write or read all those justified shooting rulings right. um, and, and now they're knocking on doors of our neighbors, of people in small towns who are literally asking things like this lady who is a special, in, special education expert. Okay. For the past 10 years, she's been asking for the IEP budget, right? So the special needs budget for the children. Every year she gets it, but she gets it after session because they don't want her to be able to, to, like, to, 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 to actually use right. the information to help us all make better decisions. But she's like, every year we've gotten it, and this year, no. Like, we just got this knock on the door during a Stop Celtics asking. game <laughs> on a Monday night. You know, Lori Ortolano's story was very similar. She was watching a game, you know. So the reason I think that's important is, so you're at home, you're in your castle, mm -hmm. right? And you are watching a game, right? The reason they said that is because that's so like American. You're at your house, you've got a game right. on. I didn't grow up in America, I don't watch games. You know, like right. I, I'll, I'll explain cricket rules to anyone who wants to know, but you know, like it's just not a thing yeah. for me. But I know that's such a sense of Americana, yeah. right? And so to have two women who live in the state of New Hampshire be like, I was watching the game and some cops knocked on my door and were like, stop asking questions, seems bananas to me. So we have got to do something so about this. Not related, but not unrelated. Um, they say that, you know, when you watch a documentary on something, like if you... Oh, ahead, so, no, so... you go first. So, so I just so, want to clarify yes, also. So in this case, so what's going on here is we created this ombudsman's yes. office, right? So the ombudsman, and it was supposed to be, although at the time I was like, guys, I... I think we think this is going to solve a problem, it's just, but it's just going to create new ones, right? Like, like when I was waving my hands 10 minutes ago, right? And, and so with the ombudsman, Tracy, the lady, has asked a friend of hers who is a lawyer who has a JD if he would help her, right? Because the ombudsman came up with lots of technical rules and it's like half like a court, yeah. but it's quasi jurist. I mean, it's just quasi, I don't know, it's, it's a bit of a mess. And so she had, let's just say it's Tracy and Bob right. out of the placeholders, right? So Bob, her friend, helped her write some pleadings. And so now they have they have filed the AG's office is going after Bob for the illegal, unauthorized um, practicing of law. Uh, and that's actually, I don't believe 
accurate. It's not because you're allowed to do three cases yeah. a year of pro se for your friends. And you do not have to be an attorney to represent to, somebody in court. Exactly. And this is just in front of the ombudsman. Right. So it's not even like in front of a well, court. So they're broadening the scope to say it's you can't. stretch. Can. So it's, it's really murky. It's clearly to institute a chilling effect, right? They're trying to make it really unpleasant for people to try and get to the bottom of real financial, for the most part, it seems like malfeasance. Oftentimes, I just but think it's incompetence, the, right, and people say, are if like, you just ah. give them the information, then they would be able to see that it's not malfeasance. When you refuse to give the information, people it starts the to worst. look shady. Yeah, and so I find this so interesting. So they basically that they they were serving her with a subpoena to. Um, to come testify about her her friend who's helping her in a case. And I was like, this is bananas. Yeah. But she says, you know, it happened within 48 hours of, of the cops. someone saying to her, actually, we think this is unauthorized, to the cops showing up at her door, which is also like, what is that loop? Yeah, that's not healthy. Um, so <laughs> It's not. So basically, instead of it being like, oh, this $25 fee that you pay to the ombudsman, it's now become this 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 like terrible mess. Right, it a, was a, a, an unregulated court system with right. no where it boundaries. Was, where it was supposed to be citizen friendly, right. which kind of to me means, hey, if you have a friend who can help you not look like an idiot when you're doing right. this legal why stuff, anybody, that why would anybody care? It, like why, right? So it's just it's um, it's very very strange. Um, so I think we need to get to the bottom of it and. Uh, and, I, you know, I, I think there has to be a bill maybe that we introduce uh, come next year where we start to say, actually, in these cases, there has to be triple damages back on the state. So if, if they're right to know things yep. and they do all this, they call us vexatious. Right. But this, to me, seems vexatious from their end. Then they have to start paying damages right. so that there's an actual cudgel to be like, stop doing this nonsense, right. please. Um. So I went to watch a documentary the other day, and um, I don't remember if we were watching something before or Dan was just reiterating what somebody had said on the radio, whatever, about how, you know, when there's, like, a, the JFK, you know, if you watch a documentary on JFK, and if you watch the, whatever the last documentary you watch is usually the one that sticks with you. It's just right. funny how our brains work. Yep. You're like, yeah, that was bad, yeah, yeah, you could be over here. I watched this, yeah, 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 no, now I'm over here. I watched um, Flynn. Interesting. Okay. And I found myself doing that, going, oh, well, no, I think I think this guy's got... He, uh, the very interesting story of General Flynn, who became the head of, um, oh, gosh, I'm going to get it wrong, one agency, not CIA, it was like DIA, Defense Intelligence, of, and eventually became the NSA director, and then the, then the world went after him, and he ended up pleading guilty to charges because they threatened to charge his son, which had nothing to do with anything. Like, it was this vicious thing. And and he tells his story, and I'll tell you, if, you know, you got to go, you can only believe what you can believe, right? But you're, like, left going, yeah, there's a lot. There's And there was a t point during this, and I don't remember what it was about, and it's irrelevant, and it, the person that we're thinking of is also irrelevant. Dan says to me, well, don't you remember when this happened and our friend so-and-so really started getting sucked into believing all of this and then went like, Psh. and I was like, yes, actually, I kind of <laughs> do. And then they, they, so now you've got this divide and you're, you're like just peeling people off with, insanity that isn't real well but it's also it's it's and then you got them in a different boat and so that's where a lot of these anti-trumpers to be honest that's what it is the anti-trump republicans let's go with that and leave it at that who believed all of this stuff that was being fabricated to and it, they talk about mar-a-lago and they talk about all these different things and like how is this even happening and yet there was this Otherwise intelligent slice of people who started buying into it and then it becomes your identity and then you can't let go of it because you're so ingrained in believing it that you're like, no, 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 it's all bad, it's all bad, it's all bad. And you're like, uh, I think you got tricked.
Yeah, and I think the manufactured propaganda out there, we've talked about it before on the show, 2013, they made it legal to use propaganda against American citizens. I might posit yeah. that is exactly where everything started yeah. to go really, really yeah. pear-shaped. And I but think, I watched... I, I think in this documentary, I'm trying to remember what the, like, what the point of, like, woo, it was that I think when he became NSA, um, the head of the NSA... His eye, he was like, he was going in to figure out what the hell's going on and get and stop all the stupid because he had been a general. So well, they saw can't, they can't do it anymore because basically it is now a global collusion, right? So the right. five eyes are the five sort of Western countries yep. that the, the Britain, America, yep. Australia, the Pine Gap, all of this, they're all working together. Everyone's breaking the law for someone else, right? Like they're moving a hot potato yep. around. So the fact they can't actually re reform any no, of this. No, because then it destroys the whole, and that's what he was talking about, military industrial complex. complex. And the information, uh, you know, the, like the, C, the, the um, you know, the spy industrial complex and how like as a military officer, he could see the intelligence coming was not matching the reality of what was there. Well, that so is. So <laughs> when you can see that it isn't happening and then you get put in charge, you're going to fix things until they kick you up. Right. So uh, anyway, we, we're going to run out of time. So I do want to mention this other documentary. Highly, highly, highly recommend uh, Zero Days. It's about the Stuxnet virus. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a virus that they use to destroy Iran's nuclear capabilities. It's cyber warfare. It is real. The people who talk in this documentary are all on the record. Uh, uh, intelligence people, uh, heads of the NSA, yeah. all of that, they are literally like, yeah, there are no treaties that uh, rule cyber warfare, like blink, blink, blink. So that's terrifying. The way they did it is through a, I think it's called a PLC, I forget, but let's say like a little raspberry. Yeah. But it was this uh, Siemens, which is a Dutch company's like yeah. little, little motherboard. And, um, and they use that as like a springboard to do the malware, the viruses. So I happened to be like watching the documentary and then uh, I read that the Iranian prime Guys. minister, a guy <laughs> got, you know, the uh, helicopter <laughs> crashed. And I was joking and I said, Alexa, <laughs> how many Simmons uh, hard uh, PLCs are on uh, like an average helicopter? And she just starts listing. <laughs> <laughs> all like, these things. Oh. And you have to be like, huh. So I think part of the thing that's happening is knowledge is out there and we are at the stage where we can truly connect the dots if we can find an honest AI yeah. that is willing to actually just tell the truth instead of being programmed to lie to us further. One little tidbit, not that this is local or anything. So did you see today, I think Avivek bought a big chunk of BuzzFeed. Oh, uh, did he? <laughs> and they There's will the, all be at the LP convention this weekend. So if you're going to that, have a great time. And Thanks for tuning Tuesday in. Tuesday night is Victoria Sullivan's uh, state senate fundraiser at the Hill at McIntyre, 6 to 8 p.m. Um, come on by, show some support, get her, get her off on the right foot for this campaign to take that seat. All right. That's all we got. Thanks, guys. Stay cool. See you next week.